All right, thanks for staying with us now. Um, the Lagos State People's Democratic Party candidate, Olajide Adedira, and his running mate, Funke Akidele, on Saturday had visited a man whose vehicle was among those recently auctioned by the Lagos State Government over the traffic law infringement. In a video shared on the Twitter handle of Adedira, the man, Osinachi Undukwe, narrated his ordeal and how his daughter died while he was in prison and he still ended up giving up his vehicle to the government. Now, responding, Adedira said, the purpose for which a government is in power is to see to our welfare. There is not, I mean, or rather, that is not to say that if you go on the wrong side of the law, you will not be penalized. But what are we um, saying is, th oh, sorry, but what we are saying, rather, is that we do not want a penalty that will take people's livelihood away from them. We have come to see how we can provide succor to your plight. Now, Undukwe's vehicle was impounded by the Lagos State government for flaunting traffic laws. And this brings us to the conversation that we are having today. Right? Can lawlessness be curbed in Nigeria? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with a hashtag WayShow. All right, so this question is something that I think we've said it several times, upside down, inside out, and all of that. But, you know, what really brought the conversation back again to this table was the press a big gubernatorial candidate visiting um what's it called someone that infringed l the law and you know was it supposed to be like a way to cheap score cheap political points i do not know but when you say things like that and you make people believe that it is okay you know i want to come and comfort you despite the fact that you did something wrong is it going to be possible that lawlessness can can be eradicated from our system when we keep having people like this, right? So there have been a lot of mixed reactions online. Some people are saying that no, Lagos State sometimes, you know, they impound vehicles unnecessarily. You know, sometimes it's not really the driver's fault. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. It's trying to justify that there are cases that are unique and all of that. First of all, I, I choose not to be. I choose to believe that Lagos State government is not trying to target this. Um, move it was collective it was a lot of cars that were impounded right so why would you f single out one person to say okay maybe the government was vindictive or the government was trying to attack a person right so i but i want to hear your thoughts so is it that because he went to jail they should have said okay that was enough punishment and probably giving him his, his car back or were they right in doing this and if so is it possible that people would continue or this will deter people from breaking laws, or we will continue with, with swimming inside our lawless anyhowness in the country. I have had, I have asked many questions, <laughs> and I and I demand an answer. <laughs> the answers are clear. <laughs> let's let's not do that. The answers are clear, mm. but oh. it's okay. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 you know. My first question would be, what do we really want as a people? Because what we are speaking about now is symptoms. Are we ready for this change that we ask for? Or we just want to shift slightly in certain indices, but we are okay in certain things. I love how NASA always calls it anyhowness. Mm. We have gotten to a state today in a nation where when somebody is doing the wrong thing, the person that challenges that person becomes the outlier. Yeah. And everybody says, ah, your own is too much. Why? I have been in a situation where buses were coming one way, bikes were coming one way, and a man in his car faced the bus, and everybody started abusing the man. Mm. You and I always say this, a government is an aberration of the people. You... They don't drop from the sky. Absolutely not. They are a representation of who we are. Mm. Now, a lot of people will say, but um, there, are, there are a lot of buts. Uh, but our politicians don't get punished. But this, the little man is always the guy, the big man. Until we are ready to face some hard truths in this country, I do not believe that we are ready for the change that we like to lord about and say that we want. 
Every day we drive in traffic, rush hour traffic for me. Now, because I know the quantity or the level of traffic in my area, I leave at a certain time to avoid getting into traffic. But some people will leave 30 minutes later, then form three lanes. Or five. <laughs> then form three lanes. No, five is even where it can take five. But they will form three lanes. Mm. Then those that will follow one way, because everybody's justification is that there's traffic and late. Mm. Let me tell you what I think. There is a justification for everything. I think I've said it before on the show. You can kill a person and justify it. My point is, what do we truly want as Nigerians? Because every day I'm driving on that road, and I see people doing this thing, and I say to myself, is this the person who will get down from that car tomorrow and say, but Buhari is bad, mm. but this politician is bad? It's the classic log in your eye versus speck in mine. Mm. Let's be clear. We can't say that this one is wrong, but it's not so wrong. Is What does the law say? This particular person has gone to jail, I believe, for three years, right? Three months. For three, three months. months. Mm. And the vehicle was seized. Does the law say those are the two crimes that are applicable? Mm. If it is, that is the law. Now, does the law allow you to appeal it, to challenge it? That is a process. Mm. But the problem is in the culture and in the mindset that people think, oh, because I really cannot understand what other reason that a gubernatorial candidate we get up. All the causes in this current Lagos is that one. Why? Because it's emotive. The people that are reporting the story, they add, it was a widow. It was a something. Why didn't they go and find all the people who have lost family members due to people driving one way? Thank you. Why? We can continue to tell ourselves lies. And it is okay. But let's all be clear that we are telling ourselves lies. And let's not be throwing stones in glass houses. Absolutely. Stop it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me come to you, Norma. <laughs> I'll come back to you, NJ. Okay. So, your thoughts, right? Because, I mean, I was just driving on Admiralty. Mm. The road was already blocked. You know that junction, that particular junction where you are about to hit the, the Ikoi link? link that, 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 that final junction. Like, you really literally know that everybody is trying to go slowly so that everybody will be accommodated. Somebody now comes from Forms I saw a guy practically with a stick shouting, you, 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 you know? And the guy was trying to move his car to push the guy out of the road, you know? So I'm, I keep wondering that, especially when it comes to traffic laws, right? We are so lawless, you know? We do not even care what the next, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in a hurry and I'm going somewhere. So when we are talking about lawlessness, right? Is it even possible? For us to even curb it. We're not even trying to eradicate it. Then let us even curb it. Because there are some places that if you do not see a traffic um, law enforcement officer, just know that that day is going to be hell. Because you're not going to go anywhere. Everybody will be standstill. It's a, it's a complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. But let me hear your thoughts. Do you think it's possible? And when you heard that the gubernatorial candidate of the PDP and his deputy visited that man and donated the sum of, I think, 500K, what came to your mind? A lot of us should queue up now, so amidst the, the Let me just go and break one law so that they will impound my car, so, so that, that we can gain the sympathy of um, an attention of it. It seems that when people do the wrong things, they're rewarded. Not that I have any problem with you and the decisions that you choose to make, but the truth of it is that where Nigeria is headed, if we do not tell ourselves the truth, like. Uti had rightly mentioned earlier, then we're heading for chaos. There's an interesting quote I came across by Archie Lee Moore, and he said that if we resort to lawlessness, the only thing we can hope for is a civil war, mm. untold bloodshed and the end of our dreams. Again, what Uti said, what do we want as a people? That question is very pertinent and we need to answer it. The truth of it is that we cannot have lawlessness eradicated if the people who should champion people keeping the law are breaking the law as well. Have you been on the road before and then suddenly you see a police van with the, uh, what do they call that, the pilot, and they're going in the opposite direction, mm. daring you to 
do something. Sometimes I even flash my light so that you know that I see you and I know that you're doing something wrong. So if the people who are the lawmakers and the law enforcers are also breaking the law, who is going to hold who is a question. Mm. There is so much, and for us as a country, we cannot make or we've said several times in the conversations that we have that the definition of insanity is when we repeat things over and over again mm -hmm. and expect mm -hmm. a different result. Mm -hmm. We cannot say we want Nigeria to move forward if we as Nigerians are not ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. It will start with us as citizens to know what we want, being able to pick leaders who will represent what the direction that we want to go because we want to make progress and that we will also hold both our leaders and ourselves accountable. So if you bring it to culture and mindset, like Uti had mentioned, we need a complete change of culture, mm. a complete change of mindset, because it will determine, we keep saying our lawmakers, uh, and Uti again mentioned that we are a, they are a reflection of who we are. So if our mindset as a people and our culture does not change, then we'll continue to elect the wrong kind of people. We'll also continue to do the wrong kind of things because nobody is holding you accountable for any of your actions. Some people, we travel out, we see some of the beautiful things, we experience it, and you're asking, how come they travel out and they don't come back and say, this thing is beautiful for my country? We need to implement it. We need to show... And, Overall, I can see that Nigerians gradually have come to be a people that lack humanity. Because if you have humanity at the heart of who you are in the first place, and you know that this thing is not good for me as an individual, you will not wish it even for your enemy. So, so, I mean, over the weekend, I saw two videos, and I'll come to you, NJ, quickly, because we need to go on a break to so open our phone lines. Two videos. One was the commissioner in Lagos. He saw an oncoming, I don't know if you saw that video, he saw an oncoming vehicle and he was like literally blocking him to yeah. keep reversing until he turned back. <laughs> Somebody landed last ma last ma truck video. You know, I just want to like, you know, no, I want to attest to what Norma said. The last ma, um, their truck, the last ma vehicle, vehicle. right, was, going in was the also wrong going direction. in a mm. one way direction. The guy also decided Blocked. to say, okay, you know what, I think it was a, a Twitter, an on online person. He blocked the this thing that you said you're going to turn back, you know. And the last man guy refused, you know, he stood there. So people kept on telling him, he said, no, no, if you want to pass, you can, you can go ahead. But this car is going to have to go back. So in the situation where we're in in Nigeria, everybody just feels like it's my right to break the law. I am in a hurry. In fact, tomorrow we are having the former last man boss, Oduye, to continue this conversation. Because, again, he will tell you that... I mean, I've heard in different quarters that sometimes, even with the gridlocks, right, they thrive in seeing those gridlocks. You know why? Because they know that some people will get impatient, go on the other side of the road, because those are avenues for them to be able to make money. So they can. So you see, the lawlessness is so deep seated that the people that are supposed to be the custodians of the law, they are looking for, they create chaos. And they're looking forward to people breaking the law so that they're after what goes into their pocket as a bribe. So tell me, if this is a, like a vicious circle, how then do we even get to that point where people just say, you know what, I think I just want to, you know, it, I don't think it's possible. Let me hear your thoughts, Angie. Okay. So, <laughs> what is well, smiling? <laughs> well, I had an experience. You know, I mentioned earlier yeah. that I went to, I was stuck in traffic. So I had to uh, take you know, an alternative route to try and convince... No, no, no. no. Just for last Trust me, I've had, I've had my own fair share of the law, and seriously, I don't even bother anymore. <laughs> I don't take bus lanes, no matter what, how bad it is. So I was on the way to take, you know that Bagada turn of how you um, join Third Mainland Bridge? Yeah. And then there was traffic there, and a lot of people were even doing one way. And you know, and there were, there was traffic, but the Last my agents were on the highway, on the bus lane, waiting, just waiting. Yes. You can, like, he, there was a lady standing at the back of the bus so that she can see, like, far away. So that even when you take the bus lane and you go get back, they will pick out your car. So mm. in my, 
in my opinion, I was wondering why aren't you, why aren't some of you scattered around to move, maybe at the junctions, to move the traffic so that the traffic is not so, so that people don't get tempted to do that. So even the government, <laughs> even some members of government actually do these things and instead of doing their job, they are waiting for the for people to commit that crime so that they would get paid for for me because definitely they won't make they won't make enough money if they are moving traffic. Mm. But when you dissipate traffic, you can be you know absolutely. It's, you know what? Let's go on a break. Let's see if we can open our phone lines and get a few people to call into the show and let's discuss this lawlessness matter. Uti is just smiling. Why are you smiling? <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in to our ladies' night out, and we're asking, can lawlessness be curbed? Uti has just been smiling and smiling. I don't understand why she's smiling at me. <laughs> now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 0702500 Remember, turn off the volume of your television set so we can hear ourselves, you know, um, so we do not have to cut you off the call. So, I mean, it's interesting, right? And that part for me is where when a gubernatorial candidate decides to visit Wait, now nah, I've not finished. Let me land. You will, not under, you will not try to justify that, okay, maybe, maybe it was one officer that was trying to be vindictive, right? So I want to be able to have a clear um, case of you were wrong with no trace of maybe this is somebody is targeting me, somebody is not targeting me. So I've seen those lanes in that Bagada, right? It's almost like they look out for the cars that they want to stop. They look out for the, you know, they don't stop everybody. They just select a few people and all of that. Can we get to that point where if you break the law, regardless of who you are, everybody goes down? Because in that cars, number of cars that were impounded, I can bet you for free, maybe they were like 300 cars. So people have gone to go and redeem their own, paid their money and all of that to get their cars out. It's the people that probably could not afford it, that they now eventually do the auctioning and all of that. That is possible. And that's where I find it difficult to be able to say, you know what? We can even say, okay, this time around, the, the government have no fault in this, right? Can we start to build in a situation, um, build ourselves to the point where if they check it, they turn it upside down, they shake it, they remove this, there is no single fault. It was a clear case of you were wrong and this is the law. And you are facing the punishment that the law says you should face. Is it possible? It's very possible. Exactly. It's very possible. Why can't we get there? There's already a law. So if there's a, and there's a, for every law, there's some, most times a punishment if you do not obey the law. Mm. So this is a punishment because I'm sure for him to have, go, for the a young gentleman to have gone to jail for three months, mm. he must have gone through a court process. And then for the reasons based on the evidence that was put before the judge. The judge made a conviction, because I don't think it's everybody that goes to jail. Mm. There are a lot of traffic um, law breakers, breakers, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of them do. So there must have been a reason why he went to jail for three months. Now, I do not understand the reason why he was singled out for this purpose. But you, but you want to agree with me that there is selective um, judgment in terms of breaking the laws in Nigeria. Well, Can we all agree on that? Well, definitely. So is that not the real cause of lawlessness? It's because one of the causes. Uh, it's not the real Because cause. if we say we want to curb lawlessness, right? If we get to that point, whether it is Uti that is my, that she's looking at me and smiling, she's my friend, yeah. and she breaks the law, that's a brand new car, I'll just say, take it for auction. <laughs> You know, is it possible? Because if we start to do it like that, maybe we, then, we can then find a solution. I'm just trying to find solutions here because we're running out I don't know how else we'll get to that point. If we, because it's very about, simple. It is about. just a consequence game. Mm. It is simple. So when you say that I get tempted, it means that you can get tempted tomorrow to kill somebody. Mm. We like mm. to quantify mm. things here. This one not so bad. This one is very bad. Line. Let's all first, like, let's all ask the question, what do we want? Mm -hmm. Because I hear us even here trying to add two wrongs to a right. Lasma, bad. 
police bad do we have cases of people that stand in places where they are waiting to catch somebody yes do you have unclear road traffic laws no signage yes of do course. you have so even in the example you gave of the last my guy fixing one week do you know whether the place that he's trying to go and fix up he's trying to get down there to face one way to get to where the That's traffic starts is. to clear the traffic no let's be clear mm. abroad emergency vehicles are emergency vehicles Mm. You can take whatever means. Then let there be emergency so, vehicles. Is the police cannot an emergency vehicle? It is. Yes, it is. Now, because you are not accustomed to the fact that the police is trying to get somewhere quickly, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to simply say is, look, let's dimension the fact that there are problems everywhere and no problem begets anyone. Mm. So the fact that I am in traffic does not say that I am tempted to break the law. Yeah. Forget it. The fact that police is badly behaved, we have that problem already. Mm -hmm does not mean that I stop doing what is right. Why do we need last mile in the first place? Mm. Nobody's asking that question. That's you have, you have, why? Why do you need control traffic? Why you have traffic lights? Yeah. We have traffic lights, but people will beat it. Mm. So at every junction, we have technological um, solutions, but we still need human beings. Why? Because people will not do what is right. Why? Because we do not have consequences. And that's what I want to come to, because when we talk about IGR, for a state like Lagos State, if Lagos State started charging for every traffic infraction, they wouldn't need to look for anybody again to make money. And guess what? This problem will be solved. So today, in Lagos State, there are a couple of ways they catch you. Some, tra some cameras have traffic lights. Um, some traffic lights have cameras. Hmm. If you go for MOT today and you don't have certain things, like if you don't have a fire extinguisher, they will find you. Mm -hmm. So these are all ways in which you can now start to curb the problem. Because I'm trying to come back to the, the answer, solution, yeah. to the solution. Mm. So can it be curbed? Yes. Do we have a cultural problem? Yes. Have we given ourselves many reasons and excuses why this problem will stay? Mm. Yes. But is it possible to fix the problem? Yes. Case in point, Operation Sweep. Mm. If you remember it, Google it. Mm -hmm. You did not try yourself because there was no story. Dora Queenly, God bless her soul, mm -hmm. Nafdak, it was not like that. It didn't happen overnight. But it was a conscious effort. And it was a choice that somebody made. And usually, change is born of consequence. It's like you have kids. Mm. If they can get away with it, they will do it. And they'll keep expanding. So we have gotten away with it for so long mm -hmm. that our culture has become lawless. Yeah. But let us not make it seem like we don't know right from wrong. Because when they go abroad, they, they don't do it. it. They, won't try they don't do it. They won't Correct. Try it. So... That accountability, I agree with you, is where the problem lies. And mm -hmm. it's gotten to a point where it has eaten into the rot. But we have to have the tough conversations with ourselves to say, you know what, I am part of the problem. It doesn't matter whether you, you stand today and you say, your leaders, your leaders, your leaders, after all, our leaders, our leaders, our leaders. Everybody. Everybody. You live in an area. You go and throw dirt away in front of your house. Hmm. Then you justify it and say, because there's nobody to pack your... Like, <laughs> and there's so many stories that you hear. And I'm like, come on. We keep saying we want to be different. Yet in our DNA... I told this story before on the show of a colleague of mine who I traveled in a vehicle with Tibadon. And the whole way Tibadon was telling me how he would be a fantastic leader, he would be a great leader. On the way out of Tibadon, we brought Amala. Out of As he finishes in the Amala inside the car, he he one down the window... <laughs> Oh, wow, that's how you're going to be a great leader. Yes. So when we start having these conversations, I'm like, but Sorry, I actually sorry. believe that Nigerians are the easiest people to, to, to curb Absolutely. in terms of lawlessness. Because you just need to hit us where it hurts mm. and do it consistently. Yes. We, we are very quick is to align. That, is that part of consistency? consistency. That's, yeah, where, we that's where we lack. Because mm. even the people who enforce these things, I, mean, I was going to ask, where are the laws that are in existence? Do we know what they do are? we know what they are? Yeah. How do we inform the people? Yeah. There's social media. There's uh, media. Um, no, public. No, no, but Lagos hold government on, tried for this one way hold, hold, traffic hold on. because they've been. No, they hold have on, been. Hold on, Ua. Sensitizing hold on. the people. Stop looking at. They the can people. sensitize <laughs> people <laughs> on one way. They say, but mm. that's not the only law. That's yeah. Only the signposts. What do they mean? Mm. You know. Hey, what are the not to defend? No, they are not. Saying that there is, if you want to go and Uchi, buy, Uchi. A, what's that book called? Highway Uchi, code. I'm saying that it I is. I mean, whatever that thing is called. Enforce mm. these things. Is that not what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Consistency. How are you enforcing these things? When those people stop you, the law enforcers, what are they asking you for? Is it really about if you've read the manual? But wait, I want is to bring it, it back to my story that I took today. What did you consign last month? 
Mm -mm -mm. Then, that one doesn't follow your question. Your question is how can lawlessness be curbed? We just talked about. Is it. that not lawlessness? It's part of last month. Consequence. Is that what is consequence? Yeah, consequence. Today, if you have a job and you Allow come, me to rant. and you <laughs> no, because <laughs> if you, I don't want us to go off topic. Yes, we are not going off topic. If you break, if you work in a place today. Hmm. If you work in a bank today and you steal money, are there no consequences? Of course. Yeah, of course. The same last month to have, is it not every day that uh, SP Benjamin Hudei is on Twitter every day convincing us that police officers are getting uh, punishment? Punishment, yes. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Mm. I saw a video recently about someone, you know, someone did a video, I think it went viral, where, uh, I think it's somewhere in the UK or something, a police officer parked in a place that was a no-park zone just because he went across the street to go buy something and, and the duty. traffic warden mm -hmm. came out and saw it and impounded the car yes no. <laughs> and then when he came out he was just running out and said oh please remove the the whatever they used to hold the tire he said excuse me <laughs> you're not above the law uh -huh. you packed in the wrong place i'm impounding your car and you're going to go and pay the fine whatever you it go is. to psychiatric evaluation uh, whatever else whatever that is else. needed the point being that if we can not it's not just about i agree the people are lawless mm. nigerians are lawless their leaders are lawless everybody is lawless what's the way forward we have to define clearly what our laws are mm. then punishment for the laws mm. next enforcement and we that are enforcing it must also be held accountable mm. so that if anybody goes against the law it will be in the news that oh a so-called local government chairman's car was also impounded mm. because he parked in the wrong place and he cannot run again or he can't go against it because he is under the law in fact today, when we start holding each one accountable, accountable yeah then there might we just be pro you know, progress or hope for us radio how a ferrari was it's on the name of impound the name was they're not auction they crush her <laughs> they're going to crush the car for Dubai. Say, go try yourself. There are laws you everywhere. Know? But I, I think it is the fact that we do not um, enforce these laws. That is what has... So when we do the shock. It. Yes, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> rude shock. It's rude shock. Oh, imagine... Imagine if, imagine if I just my car ha I, I don't go sleep. <laughs> but let me take a break <laughs> for Lagos. <laughs> are you alive? <laughs> Hello, Ibrahim, you're alive. Did we lose him? Oh, sorry. It's Let's the take a don't, don't be uh -huh. It's the crushing one that is worse. Yeah. I think I would like to buy my. I would, I would like Your to have the opportunity to, to buy it back. But the crush, watching it, I think I'll pass it. they talk. I said I go I go your face. Okay. Oh, this that's is that's the that. definition of stories that touch. And I told people today I was driving in Lekki. I was coming oh, out of the mm -hmm. junction, and it's a junction where. The, the 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 junction not too, it's not aligned mm. so you can't go straight across and i was coming to that junction and i know that this is a hot spot last month is always there police is always there mm. and i wanted to make a right i was perfectly ready to make the left as i was crossing the <laughs> traffic light i saw the last man guy there i started flashing the guy i said can i go <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, you don't yes. like stories that touch. I don't like to beg um, This is a brand new car. It's all right with you. I have, I, have, I, I have a bad let me temper. Take, let me take in Kechi from Lagos. But you know, Lagos, Ibadan Expressway, I'll be lucky at the Expressway. We yeah. test your patience. Mm -hmm. Lagos, Ibadan Expressway, we test your patience. Ah! Is it let's your take patience comments. or your organs? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> to take away your kidney, your liver, your everything. Let's take comments quickly, ladies. Okay, okay. we lost the hmm? Kechi. We lost oh, the call. We lost oh, the Kechi. Wow, we're having problems um, with our... Oh, is she live? Oh, okay. in case you're alive. Can we hear? Hello. Hi. My name is King Keshi. I, I just wanted to make a comment. Go ahead. Your program. Go ahead. We, I, as much as I agree with your opinion, we live in a country where the law is one thing, but the punishment we shoot when we implement it and when we don't. In the law, People kidnap people, we give them, uh, in, uh, what do you call it, uh, reformation. Then uh, you break up a law of traffic, they decide whether they are right you or they don't. Mm. In this situation, they implemented. Some people are complaining, some people are not. So, which way is Nigeria going? Thank you. I, I get the point. And that's, th this is what we're saying. So that's why we're saying that the um, punishment should go across board. Mm -hmm. So once 
anything is done. So, so we're not looking at anybody's face because she's saying that some people kidnap people, they give them uh, what's it called pardons and all of that. Well, if we start to say, come, this thing is an offense, it's what and it is, yes, regardless of who it is, it is maybe it is. we'll find solution. But okay. Com commensurate laws, mm. because I think I read somewhere in the story where a lawyer was saying that the law wasn't or the punishment was not commensurate yes, to the crime. To the crime, and we have laws and there are processes for getting those laws changed mm. and repealed. You have your local houses of assembly, you have your Senate reps, whatever. So these are the, this is the time hold, we need to start bringing up these people. issues. Let's quickly take comments because right. we run out of time. Bobby Kennedy from Jalingo says, lawlessness can be curbed in our country unless if those that make the law abide so by it first, then others will follow the trend. We are in a country, especially those in power, e.g. police, army, Last mile politicians, ETC, go against the laws and go scot-free without remorse. Until we get it right, we will be experiencing lawlessness. Great topic tonight. Welcome back, Hadjia Uti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Austin from Delta. He says uh, the topic is crucial. Even though I don't support lawlessness, I find the auctioning of vehicles impounded for traffic violation as... D draconian. draconian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it brings to the fore the fear expressed by some persons over the clamor for state police. Ask the state police government how many vehicles FRSC tre uh, treated that way. FRSC imposes imposes fine, subject the uh, the erring driver to class lecture, ask you to go to the bank to pay. Time you know what? Let me take a comment because that comment seems <laughs> is to be a long one. God bless you at Uti for saying it as it is. Curbing lawlessness is possible if we are willing to practice being lawful citizens ourselves. Thank Speaking. you. So I have a few. This one is from Ade. It says, good evening, ladies. Lawlessness can be curbed in Nigeria if we all agree to obey and practice it. Uti is smiling because the House agreed that lawmakers are lawbreakers. Nigerian government is a paddy paddy government from time immemorial where leaders can make a phone call of an offense committed. Mm. Okay. And Benson says, greetings, ladies. In my opinion, one of the biggest bane of lawlessness as is the presence of the use of the word I beg as a people. Very key. <laughs> Check most that use the word. Lawlessness and corruption is always present to the extent that some foreign immigration have to print, please no I beg before you enter their country. Imagine banning the word I beg from your vocabulary. Maybe sanity restoration may begin. Um, this is my favorite comment of the day from Wayamdi. He says, globally, there is no national challenge that is without an antidote. In essence, all problems are surmountable, provided there's a political will and practical measures to tackle them. Hence, lawlessness in Nigeria, which is already deeply embedded in the DNA of Nigerians, can be addressed. Remember that in his first missionary journey as national leader between um, 83 and 85, Major General Muhammadu Bahari had introduced the war against indiscipline and corruption to exercise the ghost of lawlessness in Nigeria. To an extent, that draconian measure has yielded positive outcomes. Absolutely. I think it's a combination of strong punitive measures and sensitization, which is civic education, to demystify lawlessness in Nigeria. On that note, before we go, thank you, ladies. Follow us on Instagram, so at Waste Your Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagement on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Daniel, we are sorry we couldn't take your message today. Let me just apologize ahead. Justice suffers when men refuse to stand firm for what is right. If we don't fight lawlessness, it prevails. If we don't establish the truth in our nations, truth becomes foreign in the country. God says there is no man when there is nobody who stands for the truth. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation. A part two, actually, to your screen. Stay with us. <laughs>